Hello everyone, welcome to today's class and in this class we are covering autopsy findings in case of strangulation. So we are covering topic of strangulation from multiple videos. So if you haven't seen those videos, you can just go through the recent uploads or you will get the playlist in the playlist area for strangulation okay so in this class we are covering autopsy finding and strangulation so we will see external findings okay so this is post-mortem findings right this is autopsy finding or pm findings so you can get the word pm as well so post-mortem post -mortem appearances or post-mortem findings or autopsy findings so first thing will be the face uh, will appear puffy so puffy face is the external appearance in case of post-mortem okay the face will be congested and you can see the visible edema on the face right then next we have eyes will be prominent eyes will look prominent it will be open in most of the cases the eyes might look bulgy stuffed and you can see sacral hemorrhages in the area of eye and in the eyes now in conjunctiva it will show congestion and petechial hemorrhages okay and if the strangulation was very violent if the strangulation was violent then subconjunctival hemorrhage will also be seen then we have petechial hemorrhage can be seen in the eyelids face and forehead so we can see petechial hemorrhage in the eyelids in the forehead and in the area of like face you can say like face face forehead and eyelids so we can see here okay now we have petechial hemorrhage in forehead in the eyelids and in the face right so i will just mark here like this so this will be external appearance now the spinctures may be relaxed with the uh, with with, with uh, urine or feces or might be semen and signs of asphyxia will be very prominent it will be extremely prominent in case of strangulation and more external features we can see more external postmortem findings can be the ligature mark it will be really very prominent so this is ligature mark i am just marking here this is ligature mark and this is ligature itself right we can see contusion injuries right here okay we can even see nail mark if the person if the person strangulation strangulating the other person have like big nails or like if the nails were there in the neck then we can even see congestion and cyanosis in these areas okay here we can see conjunctival hemorrhages here we can also see ear bleeding nose bleeding and protrusion of the tongue tongue might be out of the mouth right the ligature mark over the neck will be very prominent as i said at the sides at the sides and in the front of the neck so the like ligature mark will be really very prominent at the sides and in the front of the neck it will be well grooved and well defined if the ligature is twisted okay if the ligature is twi twisted multiple times then we can even see multiple ligature marks in the neck at the area where the knot was made the wider area of contusion can be seen of course if the knot is made then we can see visible and prominent contusion injuries over the area of knot the mark might appear to be oblique if the victim has been dragged by the cord or if the force was from behind and upward okay so the ligature mark might become oblique or it will be oblique if the victim is dragged along with the ligature or if the victim is uh like strangulated and the force was behind and it if it is what it was upwards okay the impression will be identical to the breadth of the ligature which is used okay the impression which will be present on the neck it will be identical according to the breadth of the ligature it means the width of the ligature if the material used was wider then the impression will also be wider and it will be superficial as well but if the material is really very narrow it will leave a deeper impression of course if our uh, 
strangulating material is a rope and it is really very thin then it will go deeper and it will create deeper impression and it might appear like a cheese cutter phenomena this phenomena is really very important cheese cutter for example just imagine if someone strangling the victim with a rope with uh, like with this type of width okay and like this is the width of the rope and if someone is triangulating with a wire so this will be more deep right and the injuries injuries will be more prominent and deep as compared to this like wider rope so if we are using this type of thin wire and cord then it will happen like the cheese cutter phenomena will be visible and we call it cheese cutter phenomena now decomposition does not damage these marks this is really very important if the body is decomposing then it will not damage these type of marks and the subcutaneous hemorrhage concerning the mark may be found really very visible now we are moving external appearance to internal appearance so all these appearances and all these feature was external we can visibly see these appearances on that victim's body or on the victim's face but now we will look into the internal appearances internal postmortem appearances in case of strangulation okay now we have to cut open the body then we can identify these internal appearances now the area which was compressed by the ligature mark will show evidences of hemorrhages so the internal hemorrhage will be seen around the ligature okay the neck muscles may show hematoma or even lacerations so we can see laceration laceration is a, a, a particular type of injury we can see over the neck and we can even like visible hematoma will be seen now during the autopsy the neck structure should be examined at the end after examining the cranial cavity chest and abdomen as the neck will be relatively bloodless as the blood will drain out from these vessels so that's why we identify we examine cranial cavity first then chest then abdomen okay so this will be the flow of examination now extravasation or laceration can be seen on the carotid sheath so on the carotid sheath on the layer of like carotid layer carotid sheath will show laceration and extravasation now the base of the tongue may show deep lingual hemorrhages so as i said that the tongue may protrude outside of the mouth so that's why we can even see deep lingual hemorrhages at the base of the tongue right the thyroid region will show subscapular and interstitial hemorrhages okay so the thyroid thyroid region or the thyroid region will also show hemorrhages and interstitial hemorrhages and in the like around the area of subscapular area in some cases the superior horns of the thyroid will be fractured so in case of violent uh, in case of violent strangulation sometimes what happened the horn portion of thyroid will be fractured if the excessive force is applied then the cartilage of the larynx and tracheal rings and thyroid lamella and other cartilage will be fractured as well so if there will be a really violent struggle between the attacker and between the victim then all these structure might be fractured and we can see these fractures when we cut open the body fracture of the hyoid bone is seen mainly in case of throttling so if someone is getting throttled or if the, there is a case of throttling then hyoid bone is fractured as well okay now contusions and stretch marks aberrations are found mostly in case of manual strangulation okay so throttling is different manual strangulation is different and uh, if someone is strangulating someone with a uh, ligature is different like it's all form of of course asphyxia but all these uh, types have like minute differences which i have already discussed in previous like lecture so you can just go through it okay 
now strangulation is usually homicidal so it is homicidal most of the time right what is homicidal mean so if i am intentionally strangulating someone and i am murdering someone so that is homicide okay it is rarely accidental it is rare to like no case of accidental strangulations right so maximum time it is homicidal it is necessary to observe the strangulation marks because sometimes to hide the case of homicide the accused might kill by strangulation and then hang the body to make it look like suicide by hanging so sometimes what happen in case of homicide the person will strike like will strangulate the victim and then that person will hang that dead body that victim's body so it looks like it is suicide by hanging so that's why we have to closely observe all these small details present internally and externally that's why these uh, post-mortem findings post-mortem external findings and internal findings are really very important okay so yes that's it for today's class everyone our external findings and internal findings in case of strangulation if you have any question query or doubt you can just comment your doubts down in the comment box and i will address all your doubts and if you want to text us in whatsapp whatsapp support number is given in the description box you can just go through the description box and you'll get all the details don't forget to join our telegram channel and don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel so that you don't miss any important video okay thank you so much again for watching this video have a great day ahead take care of yourselves and see you guys in the next video till then take care bye